Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Reuse Company webinars. And today's topic is uh, why challenging the inclusive consistency metrics might benefit your requirements. Uh, please remain muted during the webinar. And if you have any questions or comments, you can use the chat box. But please address your comments to the Reuse Company and not directly to the presenter. If you have any technical issues, you can also use the chat box or send an email to support at reusecompany.com. The webinar will be recorded and in a few days, we will send you the link to the recording. This is the agenda for the webinar. First, an introduction to the company. And then we will hear about the quality properties, CCC. Next, we will learn why we should care about consistency. And after that, we will see a couple of consistency use cases using the systems engineering suite. Finally, we will have some time for questions. So, uh, who are we? Uh, my name is uh, Cecilia Carlson from the Marketing and Com Communications Department, and I will be the host for today. With me, I have Katerina Gordonova from the Commercial Department, and uh, she will do the presentation. The Reuse Company was created in 1999 as a spin off from a university in Madrid, Spain, by system and software engineers. Our headquarters is in Madrid, but also an office in Stockholm in Sweden and a delegation in Tokyo in Japan. In, 19, in, 2020, in 2022, sorry, we are planning to open an office in the US. Our mission is to promote a reusable, scalable and global solution to a smart and interoperable systems engineering environment. And we do this by offering a semantic knowledge centric approach. The Reuse Company is also called TRC. We like to say that it, it's easy to remember if you think of T like in traceability, R like in reuse, and C like in calidad, which is quality in English. So, hello Kate, let's start with today's topic. Hi everyone, nice to meet you all. Uh, Cecilia has just mentioned, uh, my name is Katerina. And today I'll try to guide you through the concept of consistency and what do we do with this concept at the reuse company. So firstly, let's jump into the quality properties, particularly CCC. Um, in this case, we'll discuss two main topics. So why do your requirements um, actually matter in terms of consistency and what do they depend on? And as uh, the topic of this webinar suggests, we'll try to explain why defining COSI and consistency um, is a is a nice thing to do. So uh, going into the quality properties, um, as you may know, uh, there are three uh, correctness, completeness and consistency. Correctness um, is applied to the individual requirements, while completeness and consistency can be applied to both individual or sets of requirements. Going a bit deeper into the explication of those. So talking about correctness, it's mainly discussing how accurate the requirement is demonstrating a need. It's mainly focused on creating a representative picture of a need, standard, or expected result from the system. Um, the completeness um, is focused on writing the requirements that don't seek any future explanation because they're self-explicatory. They actually guide you through uh, the fulfillment of the final need. The completeness also focuses about including all the necessary elements to represent a particular aspect of the system requirements. And well, the star of today's webinar is consistency. Consistency, it's mainly about uh, focusing on keeping the same terms throughout the set to represent the same concept. Being consistent to avoid the conflicts, redundancy, and overlapping in your requirements to represent the needs. Bear in mind that um, even if individual needs or requirements are unambiguous, then consistent use of terms, abbreviations, and units, also measurement systems, in different requirements may result in ambiguity in the whole requirement set. This is especially why consistency is that important. Even if your requirements are correct, even if they're complete, if they're not consistent, the whole system is not really representing how your project behaves. 
And now let's try to see a bit deeper um, the topic. So why we offer to defy consistency in, in the Incosia approach. As you may know, the Redis company software is based on the Incosia guidelines. Although we have found three challenges in the Incosia approach to consistency. This is exactly the topic of the webinar to see why Incosia guidelines uh, can send consistency not in a complete way. And how can this challenge improve the efficiency of your project documentation and its final needs? So, jumping into the first point, um, we offer to discuss consistency against models. Why? Because um, Incosi by itself doesn't really focus on models um, as, re as a representative part of system engineering. It talks a lot about needs and requirements, but um, is not that focused on the model-based approach. Now the systems are becoming way more progressively complex and dynamic, and they of course focus on model-based system engineering. This is why we should um, we should give a better look to to the model's implementation. And here the main challenge is promote not only consistency between requirements but also within the models and diagrams. Let's see how Incosi by itself talks about models. Here you will see a few extracts um, of uh, the Incosa guidelines. So here we see that Incosa mentions the diagrams uh, and models used to represent the relationships between needs. And indeed it's true, although mm, we probably should focus more about the relationship between the models, not just as a vast implementation of the requirements. So models must be consistent with the needs, structures and functionalities defined in the requirements and requirements must be consistent with the states, elements, relationships and the representations of the models. Um, here we also mention um, that consistency needs and requirements is assisted by the use of a centralized domain ontology. This is a key concept because when we talk about different people accessing the same, um, the same repository of information, there should be a centralized domain ontology that is treated the same by everyone. And this should have a clear approach in representing the models. So here you can see the rules that establish uh, consistency and none of them exp explicitly talks about models. This is sort of the vague explanation of um, the consistency in the Incose guidelines. Here you can see the, um, an example of the need for consistency evaluation. So you can see Rat for Capella. Mm, this is our plugin, the Capella itself, and the model representation of one of the systems. Um, in this case, it's Temperature Warrior. You'll see later on the, um, the example, uh, the different use cases related to the system in order to, well, relate all of them and uh, give you a better, better look. So the goal is to maintain the consistency between the requirements themselves and the visual model. And this is exactly what we're trying to do by representing these requirements on the left into a visual representation, not just creating a mere, um, let's say a mere visual impact, but more something that can be interoperability, interoperability and um, interrelated. Uh, the second challenge that we propose is uh, to tailor and extend uh, the consistency concept. Consistency shall be adapted to the project, considering the context, the needs, the requirements, and the models. What we do at the Reuse Company is uh, to offer you the opportunity to extend the concept of consistency. If you want to stick with the basic concept and uh, the basic metrics, it's also fine. But you have this opportunity to, to go deeper and actually adapt to polish uh, the concept of consistency and consistency rules in order to make your project more flexible. Uh, let's just see a short video of this, uh, let's say, tailoring that we can offer. Uh, now you see a page of RQA. And here, after opening the baseline, uh, this is mainly the um, configuration of that baseline. So here, if we go to, if we go to the consistency to check all the possible um, metrics related to consistency, it's really easy how you can create different metrics. Uh, you can see here different types, properties, properties, location, etc. And all of them are easily configurable. Let's check, for example, this one of properties. So the name, the rationale, 
um, you are able to choose the patterns uh, related to this metric and add even the whole pattern groups. But also, um, you can go further into filtering uh, in order to detect one type of information or the other, and even establish uh, the relationships between um, the elements that will be in your system. And the third concept, uh, the third challenge that we propose is to automatize. Why do you think that automatizing is uh, generally speaking important? Well, because of course, engineers that work in a certain, um, in certain project, um, we as humans can see a lot of different concepts applied, but uh, sometimes these concepts are way too heavy to process. And consistency, it's a pretty vague concept, as you can see, for example, in the Nkosi explanation. So um, having this manual approach to consistency it's uh, kind of an interesting idea to try to generalize these concepts. They may be clear in theory, but they can practice. So in order to evaluate something that broad as overlapping, that is actually not really specified um, in, in COSE, and you don't really know how to start with the overlapping. This is especially why, while you work in complex systems, these procedures can involve vast amount of information that needs to be executed automatically. And well, here, for example, you can see how easy, just by clicking one button over here, so after assessing the correctness, you can easily assess the consistency of your requirements, uh, just clicking this one button to, to represent from one to three stars what level of consistency you have configured by your metrics. And now let's go more into the value proposition. Uh, let's say, why should we actually care about consistency? Why consistency matters? Not more or less than completeness or correctness, but matters in order to have your um, set of requirements full and clear. So in this case, we'll see two things. Uh, the first is a cost impact and a real life example that represents this cost importance. Um, in the cost impact itself, so this is a pretty familiar graph to all of us, I'm, I'm sure. Um, the, first, uh, the first step of creating a project uh, is the conceptualization phase. And of course, it carries a significant risk of disregarding the consistency. At the second step, design, it's where the ideation created in the concept phase uh, is put into practice in terms of um, clear concepts and some practical decisions. As you can see here, uh, the cost and actually the error rate grow significantly. At the third point, um, development, um, it's let's say the phase where you really put into practice the concepts and some designing solutions. And of course, the costs and the error rate significantly grow. Um, the thing is that in the testing phase, when you really try to see how to assemble the whole system, um, you have a high percentage to find a lot of errors. But in order to do this, um, the implementation goals and the rules to follow in order to find these rules need to be clear. In the production phase, it's when all uh, considering of the system requirements and specifications is over. So what you really do is to apply the concepts and well, at the operation one, um, it's more difficult to, to be able to correct some consistency errors because while well, the project is already operating and not, it's not that easy to, to modify something created before. But going into a real life example of how can we actually save money if we, if we care about consistency, um, a nice thing is, um, is to see the NASA's Mars Climate Orbiter case. So basically what happened, um, this was supposed to be the first weather observer outside of Earth, but the project um, was quite neatly developed, although due to the unit's conversion error, it has burned into the mission atmosphere. Uh, the unit conversion error by itself consisted of two softwares, of two softwares uh, one on the side of gathering the information and another one on the side of processing um, that were expecting to receive different measurement units. So the first one uh, was gathering the info in pounds, and the second one was, try was trying to receive the info in newtons. And especially to, to this, um, 
NASA um, has has lost 125 uh, million dollars. This is uh, this is an impactful uh, example, uh, and um, of course it it's uh, it's not it may not be about the same numbers, but comparing to the scope of the project, um, it's really necessary to to count on some automatization and specified technical approach to consistency. It's definitely sure that speed and memory um, are some attributes that we can receive by using the tools because, well, engineers, um, we can consider at the human site different concepts, but we can get much better results if we use some tools that empower us, that facilitate our daily routine and um, help on our everyday basis work. The tools that are actually capable to drastically minimize the risks prevent losses in millions. So it's up to you, depending on the project that you're considering, whether, um, whether it's worth to, to state the basic level and maybe risk some pretty simple examples of just unit conversion errors, or uh, to be empowered by, by an automatic uh, tool that can help you out to sort the most basic things or the most advanced ones. So now we can see the use cases. This is kind of the, um, the goal of this webinar, not just go through theory, but to really show you um, how, how can we, what can we at the reduced company do with consistency and how you in your own project can improve the consistency results. So uh, during the use cases, I would like to show you five examples. The first one um, is really related to the previous case, measurement unit accordance. The second one talks about expected values that should be within the specific range. Then uh, we'll see overlapping and duplication. How is that different and how to solve this, uh, these cases? Then we'll see a system decomposition properties in terms of uh, having a system that has some subsystems and the accordance between them. And lastly, uh, the wrong states and transitions mostly related to models explained before. So, um, jumping into the first case, you can see here in RQA, the majority of these things can be solved on, on the general view with RQA Quality Studio. So here you see a lot of requirements uh, related to, to the system that I mentioned before, temperature warrior. And um, here, as you, as you may see, the correctness was already assessed. So now we go to quality assurance and to check the specific baselines. Baselines are kind of a set of rules that we apply to our requirements. In this case, in our baseline, we have uh, different metrics. So today we focus on the ones related to consistency. And uh, the first one, it's uh, this use case uh, to avoid uh, mixing up different measurement systems. For example, when we talk about, um, let's say, degrees, so Fahrenheit and Celsius. Um, afterwards, um, after checking what this metric represents, we can go to the worker configuration. We can see that this, um, that this baseline is assigned to, to the specific sheet and uh, check in the correctness. Um, how can we modify this metric? So the metric itself, um, the metric itself can be modified and uh, we can also apply it directly to, to the set of requirements that we have. This particular case, you can apply, um, you can apply the selected metric uh, or even all available metric to consistency to, to optimize the process. So um, it doesn't take much time, but um, after processing, you can see that we only have one star in mixing up measurement units. This is uh, an automatic report that you're able to see, and 75% uh, is correct in terms of compliance with measurement units, and 25% doesn't really uh, fit into the current metric that we apply. So let's check what are actually the issues. The issues are related, um, yeah, the issues are related to two units found uh, in eight requirements. And these units are used in two different systems. So we have the degree Celsius and we have the Fahrenheit. These are the requirements implied. And now we can see closer, um, for example, in this case, uh, the requirements that include measurement unit with the consistency issues. 
um, we see the requirement itself. The description of well the requirement and the con the comment uh, that represents what kind of error do we have in this case. So um, you can see that in the same requirement we use Fahrenheit and Celsius, not a really optimized way to do uh, with the conversion. Um, well, and here it's the more um, the more detailed explanation. Um, here we can see more the specifications of um, of the error. So we're talking about the thermodynamic temperature. Uh, two systems are used in this case, uh, the British Imperial one and the international system. And both um, include the requirements that choose one or the other. So, for example, in the case of the first requirement, it's just Fahrenheit, so it's fine. But, for example, in this one, in the third one of the British Imperial system, uh, both systems are mixed. So let's see how we can correct this, um, this issue with uh, RQA Quality Studio. Now we'll search for all the requirements that contain Celsius. And you can see these are quite a lot. Um, so we open a requirement, uh, the one in Fahrenheit, because, well, mm, we do have only one system used uh, in this requirement. But according to, according to our metric, according to the standards used in our project, um, we prefer to use Celsius. So this should be changed. And as you can see, as far as we've changed the Fahrenheit to Celsius, the quality is correct. The same in this requirement, by merely changing one degree to the other, uh, the quality automatically becomes better. And well, in this case, the same. So having two requirements, uh, having two, two degrees um, to have them in accordance uh, between themselves. And now here in this window of the consistency metric, we can reassess uh, the whole specification for this measurement units metric uh, for our requirements. And well, you see that we have three stars. It's 100% uh, of, of the quality, no issues found, no requirements um, are explained as the ones having the error, and there are no measurement unit conflicts. Okay, so um, going into the second case um, about expected values within the range. So imagine this case as um, having some specifications that need to comply uh, in a certain range. For example, um, during uh, five seconds, your, your machine, your system, uh, should maintain a temperature uh, within a certain range. Now we'll show you a more detailed case of, um, of this example and how it can be solved. So again, opening the, the RQA. Um, now, this is going to be the case. So, we have the temperature warrior. This is, let's say, the master system that we're trying to, um, that we're trying to construct. And we have certain components, the control system, the temperature registration, and etc. As you can see, all of them have certain weights. Um, so, what we want to do is uh, to maintain the weights within the certain range. Going into, going into the consistency metric. Uh, now we'll be checking the weight expected range metric and how can we configure this. So in this case, you see um, the relationship created between the master system, the temperature warrior and its components. In this case, you're able to modify the, um, the, this, the relationship type between, between the components and choose the components um, of the system that need to have um, that need that need to be implied in this in this metric. So um, as you've just seen in temperature warrior, the maximum weight should be 42.05 kilograms and the control system should weigh less than five kilograms. Temperature actuation system less than 20 and the temperature registration system less than two kilos. These are the specifications that we leave in the metric. And well, in the patterns, we won't go deeply into this, but you mainly can choose um, what type of requirements. So as you've seen before, um, all of them have the same specification. The maximum weight should be this. 
and um, you can establish this this patterns in, in this window. Um, going to the quality control um, and especially checking the consistency. So uh, trying to assess this metric, we'll see what is the result. And we only have one star because there are some issues found. Um, the issues here is that, um, well, one fourth of, of our requirements are inconsistent um, in the expected range. Let's, let's check the details closer. Um, in the properties, we see that there are some inconsistent properties, and this is about tones because um, we expect uh, temperature warrior to be in kilograms and we expect um, less range uh, than 50 tons because it way surpasses the weight of the elements within. So now what we do is to assess specifically uh, the quality of, of this metric for, for this requirement. As you remember, we can assess um, the consistency for individual requirements and for set of requirements. In the previous example and in this one, we did this for, um, for the set of requirements, but now we can just assess uh, an individual consistency. And as you can see, um, there is one issue found. And the issue itself is that uh, the properties found in the specification, so the way that we have, um, you, you can see that 50 tones, it's uh, transformed into kilograms. And um, the properties selected in the metric, so the actual weight that we expect of this element, temperature warrior, it's only 30, it's only 4205 kilograms. And this is an inconsistency within the range. So let's let's try to to see how you are able on your own in, in any specific uh, case to, to solve this. And well, here you see the ones that comply. Um, the requirements that comply with, uh, with the expected range of their weight. Um, going into the quality view to see all the requirements that contain mm, the, the word that we need, one sort of uh, one way of sorting uh, your requirements. Uh, let's, let's change this, this requirement that gives us the error in, in, in expected range metric. So if we put uh, the expected weight, the maximum expected weight as only 35 kilograms, you can see that the metric is corrected and um, reassessing it here, also in the special consistency view, we see that no issues are found. Going again into the whole specification of, um, of uh, weight expected range, we receive three stars because uh, the requirements that we're complying with um, with the, with the pattern that we expect for this metric have been corrected and they comply with, with the regulations established. Um, the third case, um, it's about overlapping and duplication. So there is a difference. Um, overlapping, it's when we have uh, two requirements that conflict between themselves and duplication is basically introducing the main information. So uh, let's, let's go deeper into the practical case. In this case, we'll, we'll see separately overlapping and duplication. So the case of, uh, the case of duplication, as you can see here, is this requirement. Uh, the coding language of the temperature warrior shall be C+. Uh, most likely, uh, two engineers working simultaneously in this project have introduced the same requirement twice. And uh, although there is no conflict, uh, of course, you wouldn't like to store uh, the duplicated requirements in your system. And another case that it's overlapping, when actually there is a conflict between, it's about the error rate. So the error rate of the temperature warrior shall be more than 10%, uh, and another requirement says shall be less than 1%. These are two different uh, controversial information sets um, in, in, the same, uh, in the same context. So this definitely should be corrected because most likely one department has introduced uh, one information and the other one maybe wasn't that updated about the latest changes of the project and previously has introduced different information. So um, going into the configuration and uh, selecting, selecting our requirements, 
we can see uh, what kind of metric can be, cre can be created to, to solve this case. And there is a specific metric to, to avoid the overlapping. Um, in this case, um, what we do is uh, to, to check the configuration. Um, the first step, of course, is to establish uh, what are you actually comparing, because to find uh, duplication or to find overlapping, you need to have a source and a target. In this case, um, we we take the source and the target as the same um, as the same document, because well, we have the, we have some issues in this regard in the same document. And here you choose the um, the authoring configuration. Um, in this case, a specific pattern applied to to this metric. And what kind of results are we expecting? So this part, uh, the part of uh, of this sort of green, yellow to red scale. Is, uh, is the critical one because that's where you establish the, the threshold or um, the percentage of um, the percentage of uh, the, um, the overlapping or the duplication so how similar your requirements should be in order to be detected by the metric you can establish your threshold quite low as 20 percent for instance but in this case, um, the majority of requirements, because if you're talking about the same system, it's kind of logical for them to, to have the same vocabulary, to, to, have the same, uh, to, to have the same structures. So only establishing 20%, uh, quite a lot of requirements will be overlapping. But if we go a bit further to establish, for example, here almost 100%, so the requirements that are really, really similar will be punished by this metric. We accept the configuration, um, and um, now we'll check how this how this metric is applied to the two cases um, of overlapping and duplication mentioned before. So before, in order to to work on consistency, we need to work on correctness. Why? Because um, going back to the CCC explication, um, like 10, 15 minutes ago, um, you need to have uh, every one of your requirements assessed by correctness in order to go to a further step, in this case, consistency. So um, while processing the consistency, uh, the correctness, sorry, and uh, receiving the, um, the star specification, we see that not all the requirements are correct, but um, it's it's logical that uh, the results of correctness and consistency metrics might be different. And in this case, the requirements uh, that I've showed you about the error rate and the language used um, are kind of correct. They're well explained. They don't use uh, any, they don't have any correctness issues, but they're not consistent within the system. Um, here we can see um, some cor some correctness results and going into into the consistency metric. Let's check closer how overlapping metric. Um, there are no results because we haven't assessed it yet. So what we have to do is to assess um, the quality of, of our requirements in terms of consistency. It takes some time um, and after finishing the process, we'll see. Uh, what number of stars the system gives us, our system, um, in terms of consistency. It's only one star because uh, there are some, some overlapping or duplication applied. And, well, you can see that 80% is fine, but, well, almost 20 has some issues. Um, going into the overlapping, so the first case, um, it's the one about the error rate. Um, and here we can see the source, um, the source requirement and the target requirement. So, of course, they are duplicated twice because the source and the target inter exchange between themselves. And um, you can see that the threshold is almost 100%. And the total similarity in this case is 100 detected by the system. Of course, we, had, we have a variation um, in the percentages, 1% or 10%. But generally speaking, um, it's a really overlapping, um, overlapping structure. And um, also going a bit deeper into the explanation, what is the similarity? So in this case, the semantic similarity, the, the similarity of the wording used and the occurrences is extremely high. And here you actually can see uh, how the system uh, distinguishes 
this this overlapping because um, almost uh, all the terms are equal between the requirements. And well, you here can open the specific term um, in order to to get more details about it. And now let's go into the second case, uh, the one of duplication of the requirements. So here you can also see the source and the target uh, requirement with a total similarity of 100%. And again, the semantic structure that is, um, that is overlapped between. Um, going into the fourth case about system uh, decomposition properties. So, Let's try to, I mean, the general idea here is uh, we have a system uh, that contains um, that contains some elements. So let's imagine we have a system A that contains elements B, C, and D. And in this case, if there is maximum weight of A, the summed weight of B, C, and D should not excess the maximum weight of A. And um, we'll show this concept in, in the practical example. So this requirements may seem familiar for you for from the second case. So again, here we have um, the requirement of uh, stating the maximum weight of temperature warrior. This is the whole system and uh, the elements inside the control system, temperature registration system, temperature activation system, management and power system. So firstly, let's assess correctness in order to be able to firstly work in consistency. Going into the um, configuration of the metric, um, here we talk about property allocation and uh, trying to configure this. So you see that we establish relationships. It's a PBS relationship of having a master system that has some subsystems included. And thus, there should be um, all sorts of relationship between them. In this case, the weight one. So uh, checking closer, um, as, as I just mentioned, we have the master system temperature wall and its elements. And the property that we're trying to assess is weight and um, to be able to receive the sum of the sub elements. Um, also, we established the pattern, let's say what kind of uh, metrics um, what kind of requirements are, are we looking for? Um, and now we can, um, in the quality control, uh, we can assess uh, this metric uh, performance um, for our specifications. And now we have three stars. Everything is compliant. Uh, all the requirements look nicely in this sense. And uh, why? Because uh, the master system, temperature warrior, it should weigh less than 42.05 kilograms and its elements. Uh, so if we sum them, it's exactly 42. The aggregated value of the sub elements should be 42. In this case, it complies. But now let's try to modify one of the elements, for example, mm, control system um, and give it a bit more weight in order to surpass the common threshold. In this case, we put seven kilograms um, and this will definitely surpass the maximum of the whole system. And assessing again um, the completeness uh, in terms of property allocation, you'll see that we'll receive just um, one star in this case, because there are some issues found. And uh, half of the cases is wrong. Why? Because um, this aggregated value of sub elements, it's 44 kilograms instead of the maximum that we're expecting. 42.05. Yeah, and here we just show that the control system's weight is, um, is changed. And going into the last case, wrong states and transitions. So a bit, um, a bit of an overview before. Uh, so we have, um, we have a temperature warrior a main system that should have certain elements. In this case, uh, the control system. So yes, indeed, we have a control system. Um, it should also have a power system. Indeed, temperature warrior has power system and the defense system, although in the model it's not represented. So 
um, stating that the temperature warrior should have a defense system will be an error detected by this metric. And in this case, um, let's try to, to trace uh, the relationships between the modes and the temperature warrior states. So going into the first example, when the temperature warrior is in the configuration mode, all fine, we have the temperature warrior is analyzed and uh, in the configuration mode. The, so the temperature warrior um, shall activate the validation mode. All looks fine. Um, there is a direct relationship between it. Um, if we try to, to put the temperature warrior in the combo mode, so what should happen is that um, it will activate the post combo mode. And of course, here we have this relationship, so it looks nice. But um, if we try to, to move from the post combat mode to the authentication mode, there is no direct relationship to them. So again, um, this is the metric that should give us an error. And now let's see the case a bit closer um, in, in specific requirements regard. So um, here we see like a lot of requirements, um, mainly stating what I've just showed you. These relationships between the mode and the system elements. Um, checking uh, all um, checking all the um, metrics that are related to consistency. We have one that is uh, about run states and transitions. Um, its computation uh, includes a relationship specific relationship type, and the bottom group applied. So mainly these are. Um, Let's say um, how selective you are into applying this metric. Now going into the workbook configuration and uh, checking that the baseline that we expect to be applied is applied. Um, let's let's assess correctness first in order to 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 work with um, with consistency. So after having this assessment, we can go back to to our requirements um, and assess uh, the consistency for them. Um, in this case, firstly, uh, this is um, representation, the model representation of, of the elements and the modes related to, to each of the subsystems and the performance of the system inside. So um, if we open this, um, this first requirement that um, that most likely will be fine because indeed it's complied with, with our model. But for example, this one, uh, trying to move from authentication uh, to the combat mode um, gives us an error because from authentication, there is no link to the combat mode. So it's not consistent uh, between the, um, the transition across the system. And after changing um, the mode that should come after the authentication one into the proper one, automatically the, um, the quality, in this case, the consistency quality is corrected. In this case, uh, another example from configuration mode, uh, going to the validation mode. So there is a link and this is why the quality is high. But in the previous example um, of, of validation and authentication, there is no link. So this, again, gives us an error in, um, in this, um, in this uh, metric. And if we change it again into the corresponding mode, um, the quality is corrected and uh, we don't only uh, have three stars in correctness, but also, as it was just shown, in consistency. Yeah, the ready mode, for example, in the combat one, there is a relationship, so all looks nice, as well as between the combat and the post combat mode. Yeah, and after the post combat, you should finish the operation. And this is exactly what happens. So it's about representing in a textual way um, the expectations of your of your system now represented in the model. So now it's time for, for Q and A. If you have any questions, uh, reach them to to the Reese Company host. You have um, 
um, you have Cecilia's, uh, Cecilia's uh, host uh, message icon. And well, now it's, um, now it's all from my side. I hope uh, it was clear to, to follow the cases and really don't hesitate to, to ask any questions related. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Kate. Uh, as she said, she will uh, answer your questions in a minute. So if you want to ask anything, you can write your questions uh, in the chat box and you can address them to me, to the reuse company or to everyone. Uh, meanwhile, I will tell you about our next webinar. Uh, it will be in a little bit different format. Uh, it is, it uh, will be very short and very practical. Uh, the topic is how to generate quality reports based on the INCOSEC guidelines. Uh, it will be only for 10 minutes and uh, we will show you how to create quality reports in an easy way. The dates for this uh, webinar are the 3rd and the 4th of November. So let's see if we have any questions. Uh, yes, um, it seems that there is a lot of input data needed to perform this consistency check. How can we ensure we apply this uh, methodology earlier in the development of the system? In terms of the input data, in terms of the input data, um, so the goal is to configure the things is to configure the requirements um, and the specifications of your system, of course, to automatize uh, any process, you need some inputs. But um, as long as you have clear a few uh, steps to follow, so for example, you really want to, to prohibit the overlapping, you want to establish a really high threshold. So after you, after you have a few things clear, it's mainly about having the tool to represent your requirements and the input itself. So any sort of requirements after having this, um, this expectations from the system, mm, it's, uh, it's as easy as importing, uh, importing the sheet, uh, with your, um, with your requirements and assessing with, with a few links. Okay. Um. There are no more questions right now. So um, uh, if you have any additional questions later or want more information about our tools, don't hesitate to contact us by email to contact at reusecompany.com or through our website, reusecompany.com. Thank you very much for attending and goodbye. <laughs>